Hi everyone, we're going to get started shortly. Um, and uh, I think uh, Mary, had you asked me to help people understand how to find the question and answer or was David going to do that? Um, if you could, just so if people don't know how to use the, where they can locate the question and answer box, just okay. the technology part of it. Perfect, I will do that right now. Um, so uh, basically on your screen, you should see a PowerPoint kind of uh, uh, slide that uh, says East Coast uh, Reaching New Heights 2020 Annual Meeting. Um, if you go on and um, the bottom or in the middle of your screen, you'll you'll get a toolbar that'll come up and it has a bunch of different icons on it. Um, there's a one that looks like a question mark with a little box around it. Um, if you push on that, you should have a question and answer screen come up on the uh, right hand side of your of your information. Um, so part of your screen will then be this question and answer box and that'll be updated live as we go through the process. So whenever anyone has a question, if they just uh, type in the question in this area, we'd like you to put your name on it if you could um, so that we know who it's coming from because many of the participants are signed in anonymously. Um, and then uh, just put your, feel free to put your question or comment there. Um, we'll have a look at it and make sure that we're able to answer it um, and publish each of the questions as they come up. If there's some that might be answered as part of like the financial section, it's okay to ask them a little bit earlier and we'll try to monitor and make sure we're covering them as we go through the various pieces of the process. Um, and I think that's all we need. If uh, anybody's having trouble finding that question and answer, um, uh, you can, uh, I'm just trying to think how they would let us know. Uh, but if you're if you're having trouble, we we, uh, we certainly maybe email the uh, ECCU AGM and uh, we can we can try to help you figure that out. But uh, hopefully most can find that. Like I say, if you hover around the middle of your screen, you should see that uh, icon come up. And I think we're about 706, Mary, and uh, we're uh, gaining a lot of people. Um, and so I think we're ready to go uh, whenever you're ready to go. Great, thank you, Ken. So good evening, everyone. My name, as I've mentioned, uh, is Mary Oxner, and I'm the chair of East Coast Credit Union's Board of Directors. I would like to officially call this meeting of our members to order at 7.07. We would like to begin by acknowledging that we are respectfully gathered, albeit in our own homes, in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. I would like to welcome everyone to the East Coast Credit Union annual, gen annual General Meeting. This year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've elected to hold our AGM virtually. This evening, we're using Microsoft Teams software. Instructions were provided to you individually yesterday via email. In addition, all of tonight's meeting materials, including the agenda, our annual report, the audited financial statements, and the minutes of meeting were available on our website for your review prior to this meeting. There are several speakers this evening and I will introduce them to you shortly. Prior to that, there are a few aspects of this online format to be aware of. So firstly, there will be a 30 second delay between the speaker speaking and your hearing them. Due to this delay, we will allow ample time, approximately 90 seconds, after we ask for a motion or questions to allow all of you time to respond. Secondly, there will be opportunities for you to ask questions or vote on motions during the meeting. Communications of questions or actions relating to motions will be done through the Q&A feature in Microsoft Teams that Ken Shea just described. To post a question or respond to a motion, please use the Q&A box and ensure that you include your name. In addition to answering your question posed online this evening, we will also be addressing those sent to us prior to the meeting. Now, during the meeting, a few standard motions are expected to be passed. For example, to approve the agenda. Under the circumstances of this virtual AGM, we'll be, we will be using the un, unanimous consent method for voting on motions. 
This method differs significant or slightly, I guess, from our usual method of passing motions by voice. When a motion is requested, we will still ask for a mover and a seconder. If you wish to move or second a motion, please type your name and the phrase I move or I second as applicable into the Q&A box. Once moved and seconded, I will then ask if there are any objections to the motion. If no objections are raised, the motion will be considered passed. If you are opposed to a motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase, I am opposed into the Q&A box. We are very pleased to have this opportunity this evening to share with you our achievements of the past year and reflect on the year to come. I would like to thank our members, staff, board members and committees for making 2019 another successful year for East Coast Credit Union. I would like to take a moment to welcome our special guests this evening, including our system partners, our 2020 bursary winners and their families. Thank you for attending our annual meeting and we appreciate uh, your attendance and support. I would now like to introduce our virtual head table. Uh, myself, Mary Oxner, I'm chair of the board of directors. Ken Shea, our president and CEO. David Morehouse, our parliamentarian and scrutineer and Caroline Dickey, our recording secretary for this evening. Also at this time, I will conduct a roll call of the board of directors and our senior executives. For this virtual meeting, the roll call will serve a dual, dual purpose. Firstly, to introduce you to your board of directors and our executive team. Secondly, to ensure that our meeting quorum is met. The Board of Directors and Executive Team have the jo joined the meeting, as have you. As I read out each of the Board of Directors and Executive's names, I would ask that you type your name in the Q&A box. Please remember that there is a 30 second delay. Your Board of Directors, apart from me as your chair, are Helen McPherson, Vice Chair. Ann Sears, Secretary. Trevor Boudreaux, Chair of Credit Committee. Dan Fajir, Chair of Audit Committee. John Burke, Director. Tyrell Giffen, Chair of Nominating Committee. Kathy McDonnell Rankin, Director. Leroy McCachran, Director. Randy Peters, Director. Melanie Sampson, Chair of Governance Committee. Bill Timmons, Chair of Cooperative Social Responsibility. Included in the roll call this evening is our senior executive team, except of course for Ken Shea, who you will hear from um, shortly. Layla Khalil, Vice President Human Resources. Monica McCarthy, Vice President Finance. Dave McDonald, Vice President Risk. Sally Vanderweel, Vice President Operations. Those are our executive team who we have the pleasure to work with. I'm going to now pause for um, 90 seconds for the roll call for those people who I've called to indicate in the Q&A box that they are in attendance. So if you would type your name in the Q&A box, that will constitute our roll call.
I would ask the recording secretary, Caroline Dickey, if they if we have all people present. So we have 17 uh, members who have who have indicated uh, their attendance. So the roll call, our quorum of 17 has been reached. I would like to note that the meeting this evening will follow Robert's rules of order. I'll now uh, discuss a presentation of our bursary winners. Our youth play an important role in the future success of East Coast Credit Union and our communities. East Coast provides personalized financial solutions to help our youth achieve their goals along with our annual bursary program. This year, East Coast Credit Union offered nine $1,000 bursaries, plus an additional $1,000 bursary for the children or grandchildren of staff and board. The successful applicants are selected anonymously and chosen based on their community and school involvement. I would like to call upon our CEO, Ken Shea, to announce our 2020 annual bursary recipients. Thank you, Mary. Um, our youth are, of course, our future. And once again this year, we're very pleased to see what a promising future our applicants hold. Um, they've proven that they're not only our future leaders, but also our leaders of today. Again this year, the Bursary Selection Committee had a very difficult task to identify the top candidates plus the single internal applicant for our family bursary. We would like to extend a special welcome to those that were able to join us this evening, and we hope that they will consider us as um, East Coast Credit Union as their financial institution of choice, and we invite them to talk to us about how we can be their partner in achieving their financial success in the future. Um, first uh, uh, recipient is Taylor Mayette from Anaganish, and Taylor plans to attend St. FX University to complete a Bachelor of Science. Our second recipient is uh, Chloe Stewart from New Glasgow, and Chloe plans to attend Cape Breton University to complete a Bachelor of Arts in French and Biology. Our third uh, recipient is Marcel Desmond, from Anna Ganesh, Marcel plans to attend St. FX University to complete a degree in public governance, uh, public policy and governance. Our next recipient is Rebecca Richards from Cleveland. Rebecca plans to attend St. FX University to complete a Bachelor of Science in Human Kinetics. The next recipient is Broderick Murphy. He's from Inverness. Uh, Broderick plans to attend Dalhousie University to complete a Bachelor of Medical Science. Nora McNeil from Mabu, and Nora has not made a final decision on her university choice, but she will also be completing a Bachelor of Medical Science. Rachel Carroll from Lawrencetown, and Rachel plans to attend St. FX to complete a Bachelor of Nursing. 
Emily Johnston from Dartmouth and Emily plans to attend Acadia University to complete a Bachelor of Nursing. Maggie Hall from Halifax and Maggie plans to attend a Dalhousie University to complete a Bachelor of Nursing. I'm also delighted to announce the recipient of this year's family bursary, who is the daughter of an employee who works in our Sackville branch. The successful recipient is Rebecca Tomlick uh, from Sackville and Rebecca uh, plans to attend Dalhousie University to complete a Bachelor of Music. Congratulations to all of our bursary winners. Um, we wish them great success in their studies and much success in the future. All the best of luck. I'll turn it back over to Mary. Great, thank you, Ken. And thank you to all the, uh, the students who applied for the bursary and the best of luck to all the recipients as you uh, navigate your, uh, your own career paths forward. We would normally get to see your faces and congratulate you in person, um, but we are um, we we'll, we'll have to do so this way uh, this year. I'd like to move now to the appointment of the AGM parliamentarian parliamentarian and scrutineer. I would like to reintroduce David Morehouse. Uh, David is the director of legal services for Atlantic Central and League Savings and Mortgage Company. He will act as parliamentarian and scrutineer for a meeting this evening. I'd like to welcome you, David, and thank you for agreeing to perform these duties for us this evening. Now I'd like to welcome our secretary, Ann Sears, for the declaration of quorum. Ann will provide the declaration of quorum based on roll call in the Q&A function. Our bylaws require 17 members in attendance to constitute a quorum for tonight's meeting. I will ask Ann Sears, the board secretary, to confirm that we had 17 members participating and another 67 uh, confirmed um, prior to the meeting members who indicated they would be attending the virtual annual general meeting this evening. Ann? So for those listening, Anne will be putting the declaration in the Q&A box, so you will visually see her declaration. You won't be able to hear it. And I remind you that there is a 30 second delay uh, plus the time to type in um, the declaration.
for those of you, st we're still waiting for to hear from Ann Sears, and as soon as we see that in our uh, Q and A box, we'll move forward. So I do see that um, Ann Sears has indicated that uh, it says Madam Chair, 17 confirmed, and there's 67 who have indicated they would be attending. So our secretary declares quorum. Thank you, Ann. I would now like to have uh, a moment of silence. And the moment of silence is in honor of members who have passed away in 2019. Please join me in a moment of silence to recognize those individuals. Thank you. Now we'll move on to the agenda. As a reminder for tonight's meeting, we're using the unanimous consent method for voting on motions. This method differs significantly from our usual method of passing motions by voice. When a motion is requested, we will still ask for a mover and a seconder. If you wish to move or second a motion, please type your name and the phrase, I move or I second as applicable into the Q&A box. Once moved and seconded, I will then ask only if there are any objections to the motion. If no objections are raised, the motion will be considered passed. If you are opposed to a motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase, I am opposed, into the Q&A box. At this time, I would like to call for an approval of tonight's agenda, which you can see on the screen, also available on our website. Would someone move the approval of the meeting agenda? Thank you. Colleen Roberts has moved the approval of the agenda and Corinne Carey has seconded that motion. Are there any objections to the motion to approve the agenda? If you are opposed to the motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase, I am opposed into the Q&A box.
With no objections posted, the motion is carried. The agenda has been approved. Just as a reminder, um, in order for us to collect the um, the motions, there is a there is a 90 second uh, pause period, and so the the pause is necessary. Next, we'll move on to the 2019 annual mini meeting minutes. For the purpose of approving and passing the 2019 minutes, only members in attendance for the respective meeting whose minutes are being adopted can move and second a motion to amend those minutes. Are there any amendments to these minutes? If there are any amendments to note, please use the Q&A function to indicate the amendment for consideration and also type in your name. Reminder that there is a 30 second delay and we will wait for a 60 minute to 90 minute period. Seconds. Yes, yeah, seconds, very important, Ken, seconds. Not, not, uh, but seconds versus minutes, yeah. <laughs> I just, so we need the mover and a seconder and then any objections in the next 90 seconds. So hearing no amendments to these minutes, I would ask that, uh, is there any, um, any business arising from these minutes? If there is any business arising to note, please use the Q&A function to indicate such business for consideration and also type in your name. Again, a reminder that there is a 30 second delay. Hearing none, I would like to call for the approval of the 2019 AGM minutes as posted, which were available online on the East Coast Credit Union website. I would ask that someone move the approval of the 2019 AGM minutes. I see that Helen McPherson has moved the minutes as posted. Would someone second the approval of the 2019 minutes? I see that uh, Melanie Sampson has seconded the minutes of the 2019 AGM. I will now ask, are there any objections to the motion to approve the 2019 AGM minutes? If you are opposed to the motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase, I am opposed, into the Q&A box. Again, there is a 30 second delay and we'll wait 90 seconds for any objections? With no objections posted, the motion is carried. The minutes from our 2019 annual general meeting have been approved. 
We'll now move on to the chair's report. This year we ushered in a decade of new challenges and new opportunities, most of, most of which were attributed to the disruption posed by the digitization trend. In the last months, those challenges are like none other. As we've heard in every news cycle and through endless social media posts, we are in uncharted territory as we face a new reality because of the coronavirus pandemic. Our credit union was positioned to allow our members to use a multitude of mobile banking options, and many members were forced to adapt to mobile or other virtual op options in an effort to safeguard their own health and those of our financial services staff, to whom we are all grateful for coming each day in spite of the situation they face. East Coast Credit Union continues to position itself to meet challenges and to embrace opportunities. Your Board of Directors strategy continues to focus on our members, project and service innovation, developing and engaging employees, embracing new technologies, investing in digitization, and engaging our communities. Digitization requires a significant investment, and what we will need to consider the resources and levels of investment to meet the expectations and needs of our members. In addition to the investment in, digi in digitization, investments in our employees and our communities will remain a priority. And we will continue to, and they will continue to distinguish East Coast Credit Union from our competitors. In 2019, East Coast Credit Union has been fortunate to have been recognized for our innovations in support of members, employees and community at both regional and national levels. 2019 had its own challenges and successes and 2020 will bring many more. We look forward to helping our members as we face the challenges of 2020 together. At this time, I would like to thank our members for your commitment to our credit union. I would especially like to thank those members who work in the healthcare profession, who are frontline providers, who help our community get groceries and medications and who show, show up each day at our branches to deliver financial services to our members. To all of you, thank you. I'd like now like to call upon Ken Shea, our CEO, for the CEO's report. Ken? Thank you, Mary. Um, and as you pointed out, these are certainly uh, challenging times for our organization and our world as we navigate through the COVID-19 pandemic. But we did want to close off the 2019 year because it was one marked with great success for the credit union. And it was also the end of a decade of accomplishments. The focus of the past year has been on growth, innovation, community support, and strengthening, growing the relationships with new and existing members. We ended the year with a strong growth in all our asset lines and uh, increase in our members um, and loans and deposits as well. This year was filled with, with both accomplishments and challenges and we celebrated some successes. We continued to look at the financial industry, which shows a clear trend towards digital banking services. We introduced a new strategy that was uh, developed from our analysis of our branch network that provides key insight into consumer behavior. The strategy is designed to effectively manage our branch network, improve service at each of the touch points, including improving our digital technology and helping us to remain competitive in the marketplace. We will continue to work through that strategy and it's actually more important now um, given the types of social distancing and other things that we need to implement as a society to have those digital solutions available to you for all your banking needs. We understand our members, um, our member focused employees are a key to our success and we continue to make employee engagement a priority. In 2019 with our employee, our employee engagement scores and survey helped us understand uh, and get feedback from employees to gauge how well we are doing. And we're pleased that overall the staff uh, rated us positively from an engagement perspective. Ensuring we deliver top of the line member experience is also critical to our success and it was forefront to our plans in 2019. We made improvements to focused on meeting the, cha the changing needs and expectations of both our members and our communities. One of these initiatives included 
uh, the upgrading of Inverness and New Glasgow branches. Through these transformations, we provided a new experience and enhanced um, atmosphere for members. And our goal was to uh, use these branch transformations to create a comfortable and welcoming open concept environment that encouraged financial discussions, interaction, community engagement, and increased the access to and learning of uh, service, uh, self-service technologies. The transformations are more than just a new look. They're about a, a new experience and a commitment to our future. We'd like to thank our members and staff for their support during these renovations. Adopting new uh, technologies to address the needs of our members and grow East Coast has been key, a key focus and will continue to be in the future. This year, we introduced a product called ClickSwitch, which is a fast, free, secure way for new members to easily switch their automatic payments and direct deposits to their credit union account. Apple Pay was also introduced as part of our new credit card program, which provides ease of payment with an Apple device. These are just a few examples of steps that we are taking to ensure that we are meeting the ever increasing demands for digitization. We are very excited about the significant progress we made in 2019, and we know that the stage was set before this latest event for us to continue with that digital digitization as we move into 2020. And we hope that we continue to meet all of our members' needs. In 2019, we uh, continued to demonstrate our commitment to communities by giving back in many ways. Each year, we witnessed even more passion and dedication to our communities, and it's something that we're very proud of. We had our third annual East Coast Care, CU Cares Random Kindness events, um, and that campaign was bigger than ever. Our staff performed wonderful acts of kindness throughout our communities over the course of several weeks with the final celebration of our members and the community on International Credit Union Day in October. We also invested in our communities through financial and in-kind support um, to important organizations like Larch Cape Breton, Junior Achievement, several hospitals across our regions, um, Nova Scotia Nature Trust, and much more. We were also the presenting sponsor for the first annual Nova Scotia Summer Fest, which took place in Antigonish. This was a great first annual event, bringing families from across the province together, and the funds raised will help to um, send youth to uh, summer camps. This event is another example of the many East Coast initiatives that demonstrate our dedication to our staff and their support of local communities. Thank you to each and every one of our staff uh, for their role in trying to make these uh, initiatives a success. Our credit union was recognized in a number of awards and acknowledgements in 2019. We were honored to receive the prestigious Cody Award, which celebrates credit unions that give back to their communities in real ways, demonstrating leadership in areas of cooperation, volunteerism, education, and environmental sustainability. We were also selected as one of the top employers in Atlantic Canada by Atlantic Business Magazine. And in addition to that, we're recognized as one of the top 15 employers in Nova Scotia. Um, and that uh, was, uh, we were recognized in a section of the Chronicle Herald for, uh, for that uh, particular initiative. At the national level, we were recognized for our achievements. Um, for the second year in a row, uh, we, were, we were a recipient of a Credit Union Association National Award, winning in the category of Community Economic Development for our role in the Michelin Development Program. This program resulted in the creation of 314 jobs at more than 92 businesses in a rural section of Nova Scotia. We were also recognized at the, on the national stage with an AMI, which is a marketing award for our achievement in marketing excellence. In addition, we were also thrilled to be nominated as one of the nominees for Central One's Innovation Credit Union of the Year. I would like to thank our our staff, our management team, and board of directors for the contributions that made, they made um, during 2019. Our staff, of course, as you know, are our greatest asset, and they continue to prove that with our shared with our shared accomplishments in 2019, and they continue to prove it every day as they help us to navigate through this current situation. They worked diligently through last year to help our organization grow and prosper in an industry that's constantly changing. Thank you to all of them for your continued support, dedication, and that you've demonstrated in 2019. And I know that we're in a tough situation now and in interesting times, 
but I look forward to working with you and uh, and helping our members as we progress through this uh, this pandemic. Thank you to our board of directors for your guidance in the past year. Your clear direction and governance were vital to our success. And I'd also like to thank our members who supported us through 2019 as we did navigate through some changes and continue to prosper and grow. Your support helped make 2019 a successful year and played a key role in our growth and success. Your dedication as we continue to build a strong future together has never been more important. As we enter 2020, I'm optimistic that we will get through this and we'll have brighter days ahead. But I also wanted to acknowledge the dedication of our medical professionals, frontline workers, including our staff, who are ensuring that our communities are able to make their way through this. Thank you, Mary. Uh, thank you, Ken. Appreciate the detail in, in your report. Um, I'd like to make note that both the CEO and the chair's report talked about um, community. And before I ask for questions about both the CEO and chair reports, if you may have any, I'd like to focus a bit on our current situation uh, and the impact in our community. We know that the coronavirus um, pandemic has created a, a tremendous need for uh, food security for many of our community and our community members. Because of that, we would like to announce that East Coast Credit Union is making a donation to Feed Nova Scotia. And the donation is in the amount of $10,000. That donation will reach all corners of our province and will assist those left vulnerable or more vulnerable in your communities during this time. I'd like to thank the uh, Corporate Social Responsibility Committee, uh, the board and our staff um, for uh, supporting our community. And this is one outreach to that community. Going back to the CEO and the chair reports, if there are any questions on these two re reports, I would ask that you use the Q&A function to ask a question. You'll need to uh, indicate your name along with your question. I will remind you that there is a 30 second delay. And while it may seem awkward, we will wait that 30 seconds um, until that delay, until that uh, time period passes. We do, sure. have one, we do have one question for you, Ken. Yeah. So I'm just going to read the question. It came from Robin Barrett. The question is, I would like to know the status of the federal S&M business loan program. I see the banks are already taking applications. When can we expect the program to happen with the East Coast Credit Union? Um, that's a great question, Robin, and thank you for asking it. Um, we actually did get our application up and running today. Um, we were one of the first credit unions uh, able to start processing or uh, providing that support. Um, so that program will be available through the credit union. And uh, we now have a process to uh, take applications from uh, members that have been impacted. Uh, it is on our website. Um, I don't I don't have the link uh, right in front of me at the moment, but I think if you go into our uh, pandemic or COVID-19 um, assistance page, you will find links there that will take you to the application. Um, our expectation is that uh, we'll be in a similar position to the banks as soon as the federal um, government and the um, EDC start releasing funds that will be in the queue as we already have uh, a few applications ready to submit to them. I uh, hope that answers the question, Robin. We're also working uh, very hard with the provincial government as well on some uh, other opportunities for small business um, that will help support from a provincial uh, perspective. Um, so you can also find information on that on our website as well um, in that COVID-19 section. That'll probably be posted within the next uh, few days as we're finalizing the details of it currently. Um, but, uh, but check back there and, and there'll be more information to come. Uh, thank you, Ken. So in the uh, chat box, um, you'll see that Christian uh, posted a link so you can access that link. Uh, Ken, we also have other questions. Uh, they are from Anonymous. I would ask, I will ask in the next set of questions if you would please indicate your name. So Ken, the next question is, 
Can you share an overview of East Coast Credit Union's loan portfolio segments? What proportion of it is allocated to small micro businesses, small startups, women, minority owned businesses, social enterprises? I certainly could if I had some time to do the research. We don't report those statistics currently, um, but uh, but we can I certainly can have a look at those and try to provide uh, some more clarification if uh, if we know who that that member that's asking that question. I can tell you that our, our loan portfolio is diverse. We do have a lot of small businesses in there. We have a lot of startups. Uh, we use the program for uh, the Small Business Loan Guarantee Program through the provincial government, which has allowed us to do uh, quite a bit of lending for um, small business and, and also startups. Um, and we do have some uh, entrepreneurs that are, are women and uh, minorities, and we do have a number of social enterprises. We're very supportive uh, to the social enterprise environment, um, and we've provided uh, some funding, and we've also done a number of uh, loans and things for them. I don't have the exact numbers, Mary, but I, but I, we certainly are supportive of those uh, various groups. Great, thank you, thank you, Ken. Uh, we do have another question. Uh, before we go to that question, I will make one last call for questions, and I'm making that uh, because there is the 30 second delay, and we will wait 90 seconds before uh, for another question. But Ken, a question to also from uh, from anonymous. I believe it's the same anonymous. How have we done compared to peer credit unions in Nova Scotia? Um, so our growth has been uh, fairly good in comparison to peer uh, our peer group in Nova Scotia. Uh, we stack up quite well. I think we probably had the second highest growth, um, but uh, but ours was almost 10%, which was very good. Um, our margins uh, are a little bit lower than our, our peers. Most of our other metrics are around the same or better. Um, one of the reasons I think our, our margins, uh, our, our net profit seems a little bit lower is due to the large uh, physical footprint that we have. So we have quite a number of branches throughout the province and uh, that, that tends to make our cost structure a little bit higher than some of our peer group. But overall, we had a, a very successful year and exceeded our, our budget and our all of our metrics that we were we were trying to achieve. So I think we, we had a very good year in 2019. Uh, so thank you, Ken. And uh, on the Q&A, the anonymous um, Questioner was Anuj Jan. Thank you, Anuj, for your uh, for your questions. Um, I'll wait uh, just a few more seconds to see if there are any further questions, and then we will we will move on to the auditor's report. With no further questions, I would now like to welcome David Yule from BDO to deliver the auditor's report. David? Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is David Yule. As the slide says, I'm a partner with BDO and I'm here tonight to present the audit report um, on the financial statements for East Coast Credit Union for the year ended December 31st, 2019. This year, uh, once again, we've issued an unqualified opinion, which means that we did not find anything in the financial statements that would represent a material misstatement in the numbers presented. And as such, we believe that the financial statements truly represent the operations for the 2019 fiscal year. Um, we conduct our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted audit standards, and we are required to report based on those standards. And in order to report on those standards, we have to be independent of the East Coast Credit Union. And we have provided the audit committee with a report that outlines um, our independence of East Coast Credit Union. Excuse me. You'll note in the fourth paragraph, we outline management's responsibility for the fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with the international financial reporting standards. And that requires management to implement um, a structure of internal control 
that they seem necessary in order to prepare the financial statements in a free from material misstatement manner. Um, having said all that, um, that's pretty much what the report covers. And if you want to move to the next slide, you'll see that we finished our audit on March 31st, 2020. And if we go to the next slide, I believe there's some numbers to discuss. So here's some highlights from the financial statements. Um, you'll see that uh, member loans are up from over last year by $62, $62 million, sorry. And total assets are up by $81 million. Member deposits are up by $74 million and your equity is up by just over $1.3 million. And the key number on the bottom of the page is your uh, equity percentage. And that is the measure that is required to be calculated related to um, your compliance with legislative requirements for the credit unions. And the requirement is 5% and the credit union this year reached 6.45% versus 6.89% last year. From the income statement, you'll see that rev financial revenue was up uh, significantly, almost $4 million. Financial expenses, which are your costs to generate that revenue, were up by $2.6 million. So the net margin is up by $1.2 million. Other revenues generated this year were down slightly from the previous year at $7.7 .7 million and operating expenses were up by about $900,000. So operating margin, so that's income before comprehensive income was uh, $4 million versus 3.8 last year and net income was $2.8 million versus $2.6 million last year. So some good growth in income. And that that I'll turn it back to Mary. Uh, thank you, David. Appreciate your reporting. Um, if there are any questions on the report, I would ask you to use the Q and A function in Microsoft Teams. Please include your name with your question. A reminder that there is a 30 second delay, and we'll delay an extra 30 seconds to allow um, our members to be able to type the question. Robin Barrett did have a comment um, that he wanted to share, and I know he had mentioned last year about uh, the e-transfers at our annual meeting and some of the electronic services that we were doing, and he just wanted to say thank you to everyone on the team that was involved in upgrading the email money transfer system so that we were able to do direct deposits. Um, he and other businesses, he sure appreciate that very much. So we just wanted to recognize that we were able to help them get that uh, get that particular product rolled out. And I think we have some further enhancements coming in the near future as well, which will actually um, put the limits up a bit more um, for some of those transactions, Robin. So hopefully that'll uh, make doing business even easier. So thanks for that comment. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I did have another update. Um, the uh, since we did get that app, the um, the assistance, the federal assistance, uh, the CBA, I think they are calling it Canadian Emergency Business uh, Assistance. Uh, since we posted our um, application online today, we've had over 63 businesses that have actually reached out to us already to take uh, advantage of that particular program. So, uh, so it is online, it is working. Um, and uh, just one of our staff had mentioned that we've had quite a few, uh, quite a few um, applications already. So I thought it was appropriate to mention as we're waiting in case there's any other questions on the financials. 
thank you, Ken, and uh, thank you, Ken, for the update. There is one additional question. Um, again, this question is from Manoj Jan in our Q&A box. Thank you, David. Uh, that is really promising, impressive results. Congratulations to Ken and the team. Have a query for you. Would you have a sense of how different branches are doing, especially more remote rural branches in terms of their financial performance and other specific branches that are more active in loans and also savings growth? And that question came, as I said, from a news gen. Ken? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Um, I guess, you know, we do report as a, an overall organization. We obviously do um, do some work around um, how each of the branches is operating. Um, so we, we try to make sure we're providing them with the opportunities to grow and expand their markets and develop where we have those opportunities. Um, we don't normally release our specific financial information on branches. Um, I know we have talked in the past about maybe doing some um, shortened version. Um, profitability is really hard to get to um, because there's a lot of interchanging of funds um, between the various branches. So you might have a, a branch, for instance, that has a lot of savings um, of members, so we need a place to lend that, but then you got a branch that's lending more. It doesn't have as much in the savings, so it, it creates maybe a little more profit in the one that's actually earning a high return on the lending. Might look bad for the deposits, but we couldn't actually do the business if we didn't have both sides of, of that transaction. Um, and so you get into a lot of transfer pricing between branches if you're trying to get down to the, the, the finite profitability. Um, so we tend to work on more of the margin the branch creates and um, and that tends to, to be positive in, in all of our branches. Um, and then, it, you know, the overall financials uh, of our organization, I think, are still fairly strong. Um, but we, you know, we do have to continue to look at investing in the future, finding the best path, um, so we continue to work to uh, grow our business in all of the locations that we serve. Uh, I hope that provides a good answer, Anoush, and thank you for the question. Yes, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Anoush, again for the question. We have a question from Mike McIsaac. The question is, uh, could you explain the $2.7 million difference in financial expense line? Ken, I'm going to look to you again for that response. Yeah, I think, uh, Mike, it's actually um, the interest rates in 2019 went up. And uh, of course, when interest rates are higher, we tend to pay more on deposits. Um, so the majority of that, I think, is explained um, by that uh, particular element. Um, I can take a minute and try to find the exact details for you, but I'm pretty sure that would explain the majority of that change. It's that we're actually paying our members more for the deposits that they have with us because of the change in interest rates in the interest rate environment. And I'll just support that answer, Ken, because that's what when we did our discussions with management, that's what the explanation was. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, David. And again, thank you, Ken, for the response. And I appreciate the, uh, the question, Mike. We have no further questions in the Q&A box. Uh, so I would now like to um, move to call for the approval of the auditor's report. Would someone move the approval of the auditor's report? In doing so, I remind you to put your name and then I move in the Q&A box. I'll also be looking for someone to second that approval of the auditor's report. So Dan Fougier moves the approval of the auditor's report. Thank you, Dan. Kathy McDonnell Rankin seconds the auditor's report. I'll now ask 
If there are any objections to the motion to approve the auditor's report. If you are opposed to the motion, you may indicate so by typing in your name and the phrase, I am opposed into the Q&A box. Again, there is a 30 second delay while we wait for if there are any objections. No objections have been posted. Uh, the motion is carried. The auditor's report has been approved. Thank you. I will now call on Dan Vergier, Chair of the Audit Committee, to move that East Coast Credit Union engage BDO or their successors as our external auditors for the fiscal year 2020. So I'll ask Dan to do so uh, by typing your name in the Q&A box and also typing ISO move. While we're waiting for Dan, I would also be looking for someone to move the that we engage BDO or their successors as our external auditors for fiscal year 2020. So Dan Fergier has moved the motion to engage BDO as successors or their successors as our external auditors for fiscal year 2020. Uh, John Peach seconded the motion. Thank you, John. So the um, motion to um, engage BDO or their successors as our external auditors for the fiscal year 2020 has been moved and seconded. Are there any objections to the motion to approve the 2000 uh, to approve the engagement of BDO or successful successors as our external auditors for fiscal 2020? If you are opposed to the motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase I am opposed into the Q&A box. We will wait 90 seconds for anyone having objection to type their name or to and to also indicate an objection. With no objections posted, our motion is carried. BDO have been appointed as external auditors for the 2020 uh, fiscal year. I'll now call on Tyrell Giffen. Tyrell is the chair of the nominating committee, and he's going to explain the election process and present your board nominees for 2020. Tyrell? Thanks, Mary. My name is Tyrell Giffen, and I'm the chair of the nominations committee of the board of directors. 
Each year, the board appoints a nominations committee, which makes its best efforts to identify and encourage nominations from eligible members that are representative of the diversity of the credit union and who possess the skills, knowledge, and expertise required to serve on the board of directors. The committee reviews the nominations to ensure the nominees are eligible candidates for the board of directors. The committee also presides over the election and ensures that election procedures as specified in the regulations or bylaws of the credit union are followed. This year, there are four three-year term positions up for election. The call for nominations was made on January 30th, resulting in a confident slate of six candidates, with electronic in-branch and online voting starting on March 19th and lasting until April 9th. All regulations were followed with respect to the election and advertising was conducted on social media, our website and in local newspapers. The nominations committee had the assistance of the marketing department and other staff throughout the election process. We conducted a member contest this year where any member who voted and consented to their name in the draw to enter their name in the draw and had the chance to win one of three prizes of $500, $100 and $100. At the conclusion of the election, we received a list of member names who consented to be entered into the draw, and we have drawn the prize winners prior to this meeting. The winner of the $500 prize is Michael Asprey. The winners of the two $100 prizes are Janie Mumberkett and Gordon Gannon. We will ensure the winners are contacted and presented with their winnings. We also held two staff contests where the branch with the highest percentage of their members voting in the election would win a pizza party for the staff and coffee and cake to celebrate with their members. Any branch who achieved a voter increase of 1.5% or higher from last year would also receive a pizza party prize. We are pleased to announce that the branch with the highest percentage of their membership voting is the Harvard Boucher branch with 8% of their members having voted in the, electric, in, in the election. We are also pleased to announce that the Lordways branch received, achieved a 3% voter increase from last year and are the winners of a pizza party for their staff. Congratulations and thank you for your efforts to promote the election to our membership. I would now ask David Morehouse, parliamentarian and scrutineer to announce the, the election results. Thank you, Tyrell. The processing and tabulation of ballots cast during the voting period between March 19th and April 9th, 2020, with members being able to vote either online or electronically in branch. Electronic voting was executed through the eVote service rendered from the Credit Union Executive Society, or QIS, a nonprofit international membership association for CU executives. As tabulated, there were 681 total ballots cast, among which 19 were identified as invalid for the following reasons. Eight for missing user ID or password, six for invalid user ID or password, three for more or less than the required four votes, two already voted online. Of note is that all 19 of the invalid ballots were paper ballots. Among the 662 total valid ballots cast, 58 paper ballots were cast with the remaining 604 ballots cast electronically. The results have been confirmed by the QS election manager. And the following are the directors elected to each of the four vacant three-year term positions in alphabetical order by last name. Daniel Cooper, Dan Fougier, Helen McPherson, and Melanie Sampson. Congratulations and thank you to all candidates and members for participating in the election. I will now turn the podium back over to Mary. Thank you, David, and congratulations to um, those board members elected for three year terms. We look forward to uh, continuing and working with you over the next uh, next number of years. I would like to call for a motion to destroy the balance from this election. Um, would someone move to destroy the balance? And I remind you to 
to destroy the balance, I'd ask you to put your name in the Q&A chat with a uh, motion uh, with the caption destroy ballots. So following that motion, I'll also be looking for someone to second the motion to destroy the ballots. Again, there is a 30 second time delay, um, and but we we are looking for someone to move the destruct the ballots be destroyed. So Kathy Mackinaw Rankin moves that the ballots be destroyed, and Colleen Roberts seconds that motion that the ballots be destroyed. So we have a mover and a seconder that the ballots be destroyed. I will now ask, are there any objections to the motion to destroy the ballots? If you're opposed to the motion, you may indicate so by typing your name and the phrase, I am opposed into the Q&A box. And again, there is a 30 second delay and we will wait the 90 seconds to see if there are uh, objections. So again, I ask you to type your name if you have objections and indicate so. There have been no objections posted. The motion is carried. The ballots can be destroyed. We'll now move on to old business. There is one item of old business from the 2019 AGM regarding the process used for voting in the annual board of directors election. Your board committed to revisiting research that had been conducted on this topic and providing you with a report containing information on various voting options available. I'll now ask Tyrell Giffen, um, Chair of the Nominating Committee, to present this report. Tyrell? Hi, so again, my name is Tyrell Giffen. I'm the Chair of the Nominations Committee of the Board. The Nominating Committee was tasked with researching and reporting on voting methods to the membership at this AGM. The committee determined three methods of voting should be researched. Our current system, where members must vote for the full slate of seats available and may only place one vote on each of the selected candidates. For example, if there are four seats available and six candidates running, the member must place one vote on four different candidates. The second method researched was the modified current method where the members would not have to vote for the full slate, but may only place one vote on each of the selected candidates. For example, if there are four seats available and six candidates running, the member may place one vote on up to four different candidates. The third method researched was cumulative voting where members would be allocated votes equal to the number of seats available. The member would then be able to allocate these votes however they choose, including multiple votes on one candidate. For example, if there are four seats available and six candidates running, the member would receive four votes that could be placed all on one candidate, three on one and one on another, two on one candidate and two on another, and so on. Next. The committee conducted research on these three voting methods. The research conducted included online research 
exchanging information with other similar sized credit unions across the country and reaching out to other organizations such as municipalities determine their voting methods of choice. Once the research was complete, a voting system matrix was developed, displaying the three voting methods and a slate of criteria each vo voting method was rated against. The criteria are as follows. Satisfies the one member, one vote principle. Assumed under the current method that at least some members would not vote for the full slate, devaluing their vote. Assumed under the cumulative voting method, at least some members would allocate multiple votes to one candidate, which would receive, result in that candidate receiving more than one vote per member. Used by other similar sized credit unions across the country. We contacted six similar sized credit unions across Canada and received responses from five. All five use the modified current method. Allows members to vote for a number of candidates fewer than the number of available seats. Assumed under the modified current method, at least some members would not vote for the full slate. And assumed under the cumulative method, at least some members would place all their votes on one candidate. Removes the ability for strategic voting. Assumed that under the cumulative voting method, at least some members would place multiple votes on one or more candidates, and some would vote for the full slate. This would allow for members to strategically pool their votes, giving them more control over the outcome of the election heightens the opportunity for proportionate representation. Assume that under cumulative voting, at least some members will place multiple votes on at least one candidate, and some will vote for a full slate. This could result in small groups of members having larger control over the vote than members who allocate their votes more evenly. Increased chance for minority groups to elect a representative. Assumed that under cumulative voting, at least some members will place multiple votes on at least one candidate, and some will vote for a full slate. This could result in small groups of members having a larger control over the vote than members who allocate their votes more evenly. Widely used by other electing organizations, municipalities. We contacted several municipalities in Nova Scotia and Ontario and found that all were using a modified current approach or similar variation. Increased voter engagement. Assumed that by requiring members to vote for a full slate, they will do the required research to learn about the candidates they do not know, compared to the other methods which would simply allow the members to exclude any candidates they didn't know. The voting metric matrix shows the completed research and the ranking of the three voting methods. For the criteria of satisfies one member, one vote principle, the current system meets this criteria. The modified current method and the cumulative voting both do not. For the criteria used by other similar sized credit unions across the country, the current system and cumulative voting methods do not, while the modified current method does. Allows members to vote for a number of candidates fewer than the number of available seats. The current system does not meet this criteria, but the modified current method and the cumulative voting method do. Removes the ability for strategic voting. The current system and the modified current system both are both are good for this criteria, while the cumulative voting does not. Heightens the opportunity for proportionate representation. Current system meets this criteria, while the modified current method and cumulative voting method do not. An increased chance for minority groups to elect a representative. The current system and modified current me method do not meet this criteria, while the cumulative voting system does. Widely used by other electing organizations, EX municipalities. The current system and the cumulative voting do not meet this criteria, 
while the modified current method does. Increased in voter engagement. The current system meets this criteria, while the modified current method and the cumulative voting do not. The totals based on our criteria are four met criteria and four not met criteria for the current system. Four met criteria and four not met criteria for the modified current method. Two met criteria and six not met criteria for the cumulative voting method. Thank you and I'll pass it back to Mary. All right, Tyrell, thank you for your comprehensive report. We'll now open it to the Q&A um, for those who have any uh, have any uh, have any uh, questions um, about the um, about the analysis. And also, if there are any questions regarding old business, please type those questions in the Q&A function. Please include your name with the, the question. So um, we'll wait for the 30 second delay to pass. Uh, in case there are questions regarding uh, the presentation, but uh, also regarding any old business that uh, that uh, our members want to uh, raise. Uh, so there are two questions. Um, two questions. One is from Corinne Carey. Did the committee explore a ranking of the candidates? If there were six candidates, you would rank your choice from first to last. Tyrell, is that something that the committee uh, discussed? The committee discussed a ranking method um, when we were determining which systems we wanted to research more thoroughly. We felt at the time that that was not a suitable um, method for us to consider researching farther, especially considering um, the amount of research we were going to put in. We felt that it would be appropriate to only present on three methods and it didn't meet the, the committee's um, initial criteria to be researched further. So I guess we did research it slightly, but not to the extent that the other three systems were researched. Thank you, Tyrell. Uh, next is a more comment uh, from Anuj Jan. The second criteria of how other credit unions are doing seems to be uh, quite relevant. So that was included as a criteria. Uh, third question, a third is a, a question uh, from Mike McIsaac. Are all the criteria weighted the same? Um, we as a committee did not discuss weightings of the criteria. We we um, just we developed the criteria and gave them all answers and we hadn't discussed whether each one should be weighted differently. So I guess um, at this point in time, the answer to that question would be yes, they are all currently weighted the same. Thank you, Tyrell. So uh, this is a sort of presentation of the research um, and this uh, information you've gathered, Tyrell, will be used in decision making going forward. Uh, one additional question um, from Anush Jan. Is there any more explanation obtained from those credit unions? Um, I assumed it's about the second criteria of how other credit unions are, are doing. Tyrell? Yeah, so I had conversations with uh, five other credit unions across the country. 
most of them just said that that's what they've been doing for a long time and that's how they do it now we didn't really get into why they were doing it that way because most people didn't really have an answer over and above that's how it's always been done um, so we more so discussed the pros and cons of it and not so much um, about why they felt that way great thank you tyrell um, and as indicated, that information uh, fuels the nominating committee in next year uh, and on a regular basis, um, as you've indicated, uh, we do look at the voting process to, to uh, determine what is, is best for our credit union. Uh, that concludes our uh, new business, we'll now, uh, old business, sorry. We'll now move to uh, the new business. And I would like to open the floor for any new business. If you have any business and you'd like to ask a question, please indicate your name, and question or comment using the uh, Q&A function. I'll, I'll pause for um, the 30 second delay, plus a little additional time for you to be able to type in if you have uh, a question or comment related to new business. Uh, there's been no new business, uh, no other new business indicated in the Q&A box on Microsoft Teams. So we will continue to our closing and to our adjournment. I would like to finish our AGM by thanking our elections team, our marketing communications team, our IT department for the role in putting this evening together for us. Keeping in mind that this year uh, we were uh, uh, using a virtual uh, AGM. I would also like to thank everyone again for attending this evening. Uh, as, as you see, we had a very successful year in 2019 and it was my pleasure to recount successes to you. I do wish you a safe evening at home and ask that you continue to practice physical distancing as prescribed by our public health officials. We are reminded to continue to thank healthcare professionals and anyone in the front lines of delivery of food and medication, financial services and cleaning for their uh, commitment and willingness to, to do what you are doing. So thank you. So I'm just getting a notification that there is one more comment just before we uh, we finish. So let me just, I, I missed that. So I'm just going to see what that is. Um, just before we adjourn the meeting. So I will read Michael Kozik writes, um, uh, voter engagement and one member, one vote are more important than say is the system used elsewhere. So thank you for that comment. Mike we will include that in the um, in the consideration going forward. Uh, and Mike McIsaac also writes, keep the cooperative principles in mind when making a decision. And always, thank you, Mike, for reminding us that it's, it's always, uh, it was always part of our decision making. So we do appreciate that. And so we complete our thank yous. Uh, we also thank you for your patience in terms of delivering the virtual AGM. The, AG, the uh, virtual means uh, the, the pauses may have seemed awkward to you. They certainly did to me. Um, but that was a necessity for you necessity for using um, the software and having such a large group attending. And I appreciate you you coming and participating in the way that you did. So thank you. Uh, we'll move now to our meeting adjournment. So having concluded our business agenda for the evening, I do declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good night. 
and keep well.